Hey everyone, today we want to talk about saving mercy, protecting your healer, being aware of your surroundings enough to know that you have a vulnerable uh, person behind you that is keeping you alive, that is recovering your health or giving you a damage boost, and you have to be mindful not only of yourself and be aware of your surroundings of flankers and people trying to get the jump on you, but you also need to be aware that there's somebody standing maybe four or five steps behind you that is even more vulnerable and needs a little bit of protection, needs a little bit of TLC. So we're going to take a look at protecting Mercy today, what you need to be aware of, and how you can best be able to take advantage of having a healer. I think generally a mistake a lot of people make is they see that on, on their UI that they have a Mercy healing them currently, and they tend to take more risk. They tend to see, oh, you know what? I have more life. I have the ability to push damage a little bit longer, so I'm going to take a slightly more risk. I'm going to push ahead slightly more, and there is some merit to this, but in certain situations, particularly the desperation of a last cap point where defenders are in an enclosed space, they have areas of attack that they can come from different angles at you and set up ambushes essentially and so you, you need to not overextend yourself on attack in these situations if you have a mercy on you because you need to keep in mind yes you do have more survivability with the mercy but the enemy team knows this as well and they're not going to if they're smart they're not going to just directly target you first they're going to target the healer so you need to actually play slightly more conservative when you have a healer on you we have a mercy behind you trying to keep you up because you need to make sure that she stays alive. The enemy team knows that not only is your survivability much greater with Mercy healing you, but if you do get killed, she's probably going to res you or res multiple people that have died in the area. And that's just something they can't afford to deal with. They can't afford to take down a whole life and then have to deal with that life again because sometimes that can be team wiping and it's a loss. So they have to target Mercy first. If you keep this in mind, you need to play almost like... Mercy is an extension of yourself. There's a symbiotic relationship between the two that, that needs to be kept in mind if, you, if you're being actively healed by her, especially if you're a, a tank and you have the ability to absorb some kind of damage or mitigate damage. You need to be mindful that not only are you mitigating it for yourself, but you need to mitigate it for the healer behind you. A Roadhog needs to position himself in ways that can block damage. Reinhardt's excellent at... at considering angles, but Reinhardt needs to keep in mind that not only is the flankers going to be targeting Mercy, but they're going to be targeting her in a way that his shield may not be as effective. He may have to actually drop the shield, considering what's ahead of him, drop the shield for a moment, pull out the hammer, and take out those flankers, because Mercy is top priority. Blizzard has prepared a few UI elements that really help with this. Uh, first of all, the indicator, the heal health indicator that pops up on your screen when you're being actively healed by a Mercy shows that you, her health, it, it actually shows her health bar. If you see it start to drop, you know that she's under attack. You need to turn and make sure that, that she's okay, that she's not taking damage from somebody that can instantly kill her. Uh, you know, it, if it's too late, then it's too late. But if, if it's small damage, if it's damage that can be somehow mitigated or diminished, you know, you can, if you have the ability to, to save her, you need to try to give it a shot. Uh, something else that's useful is Blizzard has put in a voice communication that when Mercy is under attack, generally she'll call for help. And this, this applies to a lot of the healers, that if they're under attack directly or if somebody's targeting them, they will call for help. If you hear this, you need to turn and see what they're dealing with and see if you can somehow interfere or save them. Essentially, you want to keep in mind that when you have an active healer that you know is in the area, they're a vulnerable target. And so taking risk is not an option. It's actually detrimental mental to the team as a whole. If you're by yourself and you're going Rambo style and you think you have the po the possibility to pull off something amazing, to pull off some kind of, you know, team kill that you can you can pull off as an ambusher or a flanker, that that's that's one thing. But when you're in the front lines pushing, you need to play consistent. You need to play uh, with a sense of a coherent unit that you need to stick together you need to slowly move ahead a as a group eliminating any threats that are trying to attack you from the side and protecting your weak spots in the group mainly the healer protecting your healer can make a massive difference when you're making this final push because your healers generally will make 
huge efficiency out of your lives. They will increase your survivability. They will make it so the enemy team's advantage on, on a final attack that they can respawn and run back is negated by the healer's ability to keep you alive longer, keep you in the front lines, and keeping you up, especially with a Mercy who has the ability to res. As always, guys, I hope you found this useful. Get out there, save some Mercies, and you'll see how much of a difference it can really make in the final moments of a game. Good luck out there, guys, and I'll see you in game.